Mr. Gabriel and Ms. Christina back from Mexico, and Pastor John from Colton. Yes. <laughs> oh, the camera's on. Thank you very much. Well, welcome everyone. Guys, say say welcome to those watching by live stream. Welcome. Amen. We want to welcome you today. I'm Pastor John, along with Pastor Jeff, Miss Tiff, there on the flutes and vocals and stuff, and our radiant choir. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Oh, okay. It's going to be a good day. I can feel it, man. Amen. So let's let's uh, let's open up a prayer. I think Miss Brenda's still out of town. Yeah. So let's. Uh, um, Let's open up in prayer. I, you know, I prayed uh, with the situation that's going on with Israel, but I want us as a corporate to, 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 to pray as well because, you know, I understand things have kind of quieted down, but, uh, you know, we don't know what the next step is going to be. And I'm not going to sit here and try to uh, figure out because we don't need to be disclosing information. That's one of the problems when you have people that they, you know, especially in the news uh, world where they want to know what's going on. And the problem is, is that you give them information, then the enemy takes that information and they use it to take and to thwart that what you're doing and stuff like that. So we don't want to do that, but we want the mind of Christ. Okay. And Israel, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be honest, guys, you know, we look at different nations of the world, but in all honesty, we're all one big, really one big fa family. Okay. Because we all came from the very beginning in Adam and Eve, which came from God. So the diverseness of what has taken place in society and in cultures, it's, it's, that's basically it's, it's, it's man-made, okay? Well, when God made Adam and Eve, and all of a sudden he said, and, and then when he spoke and he said to Abraham, he says, your seed and your seed seed are going to be blessed and they're going to prosper, that's us, amen? amen? So, you know, whether you want to call yourself Jewish or whether you want to call yourself a Gentile, whether you want to call yourself an Italian or an American or a Puerto Rican or whatever you want to call yourself, you know, we're all one family, okay? So, you know, in my family, when, when one uh, is struggling, then we step up to the plate and we, we help and we do whatever we can and stuff like that. So, so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, sir, for the honor and the privilege that we have today, Lord, to be able to come before your throne. On behalf of our family, on the other side of the world, Father. Israel, the Jewish people that from, seems like from the beginning there had been nothing but trouble and struggle. And I'm not trying to bring them and say that, well, the other, the other nations, they, they, there's of no value, Father. We are all together in this whole thing. But Father God, Israel has fought for their, for their existence. Israel has fought, Lord, to be able to live and to be able to, to thrive in their lives. And so we stand with Israel as we pray for the peace in Jerusalem. And Father God, your perfect will and purpose will be established. And even through this, as nations of the world are even gathering around Israel, to help even some of the Arab nations that are standing with Israel. Father God, not to try to take into cause problems for Iran or anyone else, but Father, that, that we will find, Lord, that uh, in the region where there has been so much turmoil, that there can be peace. Now I know that that's a stretch but your word says that nothing's impossible with you your word teaches us Lord that we can walk in unity As a matter of fact Jesus you said let them be one even as you and I are one talking to the Father so Lord until the day when we all are taken from this from this land Father God I pray for the peace in the region of the Middle East. There was at one point, Father God, where there was peace when the Abrahamic Accord was signed into place. What you did once, you can do again. So Lord, once again, have your way. 
and let your kingdom rule. Let your kingdom reign. And let us come under submission, Father God, to your perfect will and purpose. For Israel, for the Middle East, for the African nations, the Asian nations, the South American nations, America itself. Have your way. Lord, we know that as we call upon you, our God, the Ancient of Days, Father God, that we will rule and we will reign in victory. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever and ever. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Can you say amen to that? Okay. Hallelujah. Are you ready? You going to clap with us? Come on.
Would you take the little in my hands Use it for your glory It's not much, but everything I have Use it for your glory We only give what we receive from you Use it for your glory It's your love that we're responding to Jesus for your glory Be exalted, O oh God Higher and higher be exalted, O oh God. Higher and higher take the little that we have and fill it with your power for your glory. Be exalted, O oh God. Higher and higher be exalted, O oh God. We only give what we receive from you. Use it for your glory. It's your love that we're responding to. Jesus, for your glory. Be exalted, O oh God. Be exalted, O oh God. power for your glory be exalted oh god be exalted oh god higher and higher be exalted oh god higher and higher take the little that we have fill it with your power for your glory You're the power in our weakness. You're the treasure shining through. You are for you are for us. Christ within us. We give everything for you. You're the power. You're the power in our weakness. You're the treasure shining through. You are for us, Christ within us. We give everything for you. Be exalted, be exalted, O oh God. Higher and higher, be exalted, O oh God. Take the little that we have, fill it with your power for your glory. Be exalted, oh God. Be exalted, oh God. Higher and higher, be exalted, oh God. Higher and higher, take the little that we have, fill it with your power. Your glory, you're the power, you're the power in our weakness, you're the treasure shining through. You are for us, Christ within us. We give everything for you. You're the power. You're the power in our weakness. You're the treasure shining through. You are for us, Christ 
within us. We give everything for you. Be exalted, O oh God. Higher and higher, be exalted, O oh God. Higher and higher, take the little that we have. Fill it with your power for your glory. One more time. Be exalted, O oh God. Higher and higher, be exalted, O oh God. Higher and higher, take the little that we have. Fill it with your power for your glory. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you for all that you are. fall short I got nothing new How could I express all my gratitude I could sing these songs But you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know
Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Say it again. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. One more time. Come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So I throw up my hands. Praise you again and again. So all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know it's not much. I'm nothing else fit for a king.
Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time, oh, and I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. all that I have is a of the Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and sit down for a few seconds here. We'll go ahead and get your communion elements out. We're going to get and receive communion this morning. If you don't have any elements, just raise your hands and Donnie will see that uh, you get your communion and uh, We'll take it all together, those watching my live stream. Whatever it is that you want to use in your home, if you want to join us today. You know, two and a half years ago, almost, yeah, about two and a half years ago, when the Lord instructed me to have communion every week, I didn't quite understand the whys. Even though there's nothing wrong with it, because it's very beneficial. I know people that take it every day. There was a season that I was taking it every day, but with all that's happening around the globe today I realize more and more and more and more how much we need of the presence of God yes but how much more that we need to cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus to really understand and acknowledge what price was paid and the value of that which was paid that 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 God's God saw that it was so important for you and I to often remember, not to forget, because there's so much information out there, especially in the internet world, where you can get overwhelmed with the negativities of life. You can get overwhelmed. I remember I was talking with somebody when the October 7th hit Israel, and I remember I had a, somebody who we were talking one day and they said, you know, um, this thing really hit me. And I've, I've become concerned because I realize the seriousness of, of, of these days that we're living in. This, this is not, you know, when I, when I was, when Pastor Dan and I first got married, you know, I remember I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, please don't, don't, don't come yet because I, I, I want to be able to experience married life first. <laughs> Now here we are, 51 years later, and it's like, okay, Lord, how much more closer we are to that day. But one day, there's going to be a trumpet sound. One day, when the eastern sky is going to split open, and here comes Jesus, along with an army, riding on horses, coming, not only to get us, and, 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 and let me, let me, let me, clear up some things if, 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 if you've been taught one way we've been taught that when Jesus comes and he's going to take us to, left, to heaven and we're going to live forever in heaven no okay because there's going to be a period of time where there's going to be a reign where Christ is going to reign over the earth and we as not only his sons and daughters but we as, as the Bible teaches us that we are kings and priests unto God that we will rule and reign with him forevermore. Amen. Um, so if, if you've got this mindset that, you know, you're going to get out of here and go to heaven and you're not going to have to worry about it, don't do that. Because we will reign with him. But let's not wait until that time comes. Uh, you know, my, my, my prayer is not God come. My prayer is God what do you want from me? What is it that you need from me? Why is it that I'm alive still on the earth today? What is it that you want from me that, that, that I'm still here? And let me fulfill that, that purpose. Let me fulfill that plan that you've had even before the foundations of the world. Even before I was a, a little twinkle in my mama's womb. 
Let me fulfill that call before my time is up so that I can, like Paul, say, you know, I've run the course. I've finished my race. Now there's a crown waiting for me. And so, you know, but, but even with that, the whole purpose of that crown is not so that we can take and act like we've arrived and we're all, we're all in the bag of chips. But simply like the elders do when the worship goes forth, and the Bible says that the elders that sit around the throne, the 24 elders, that they come off of their throne and they fall prostrate before he who sits on the throne. And they take their crowns and they begin to throw them at the, what you want to say, throw them, cast them, however you want to place them at the feet of, of Christ, the true king of kings. That's what worship is about. It's not about how pretty you can sing or how good you look or anything else. It's simply about a heart that is acknowledging that God, you are everything. And without you, I'm nothing. This life that I live, this, this place that God has, has, has put me in here at Colton and at Radiant Church to be the pastor, I would not be able to do anything if it wasn't for his power that lives inside of me, that gives me the grace and the ability to do the things that I do. I, for years, I've always sat at the keyboard, and here I've been standing for the last few years. And you know what? Okay, thank you, Lord. Because, see, you guys are sitting in your chairs and you're nice and comfortable. But we up here, when, we, when Jeff and I are standing, it's like, okay, you know, especially when you get a little bit older. All of a sudden, the muscles don't quite, you know, hold on like they used to. Amen, somebody? Amen. And, and that's okay. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm not trying to, to, to put you down or try to make you feel belittled. I, it's just realities. This body is deteriorating and every day but you see I don't live according to what the body says I live according to what the spirit that lives inside of me says and so as we partake of our, our communion elements today realize that that you can find strength in these bodies because of what Jesus paid upon the cross in Calvary that when his body was broken was broken so that yours can be mended and whole. Even in a weakened state. But then we can declare that when I'm weak, he makes me strong. Okay? Remember, I can do all things who? Through Christ. I can live this life through who? Through Christ. I can, I can sing my song and I can worship him not in my own strength, because in my own strength, I, I could get tired. But he gives me the strength to go on. That I can stand before you and lead in worship. And I can stand before you and, and share the word of God and not be all you know, cracking and, and coming under the pressure of what life offers. So if you need healing, those watching my live stream, if you need healing, whatever it may be in your life, whether it's your body, whether it's your mind, whether it's your heart, whether it's family, what, friends, whatever the circumstance may be, maybe, maybe in your finances. Um, by faith, receive. Don't, 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 don't take it lightly and don't, don't put it where it's, well, okay, if it works, it works. No, it's already done. It's up to you and I to be able to, by faith, receive it and allow it to manifest in its fullness in our bodies. So if you need healing, be healed. Be set free by the power of the stripes that Jesus bore upon his back. In Jesus' name, go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Take your cup. Life. Life. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. 
Jesus said, I've come to give you life. When the children of Israel were enslaved by Pharaoh in Egypt, they struggled, they were oppressed, they were impoverished. But it was the blood that set them free. It was the blood that gave them new life, a new hope. That they walked out of Egypt free. They walked out of Egypt prosperous. They walked out of Egypt without the fear of the retaliation. Because when God works on your behalf and he gives you that life, there's nothing in hell that can ever take and hinder that which he's doing as long as you trust, as long as you obey that which he's called you to do. Amen. So lift your cup with me. Those at home, lift your cup with me and declare Lachaim to life in Jesus' name.
as living stones where you're enthroned. And as you rose from death in power, so rise within our praises, rise upon our praise, and let the hand that saw you Clothe us in your glory and draw us by your grace. Oh, the glory of your praise. in us and don't leave us Lord 
Lord, let us never get to a place where we put on a production for you. But it's a production that is not what you're looking from us. That it causes you not to stay. One day, one day, Lord, you're going to come and you're going to savor every moment of what we offer you. And we're going to find, Lord, that we don't want to quit. We don't want to stop. We love being in your presence. As a songwriter wrote, it's in your presence. That's where we are strong. It's in your presence. That's where we belong. That's why, Jesus, you came into this world. It's to redeem, it's to restore us back to that place of being in the presence of Father. To love on Him and for Him to continuously, as He does, so wonderfully love on us. Where we can live in the secret place of the Most High. If we can abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. With the confidence, Lord, that we can say of you, Lord, that you are refuge, you are fortress, you're our God. Not the government, not the medical world, not the financial institutions not academia, not the athletic world, not the entertainment world, not the media, even social media. There's no building, Lord, that can, that can secure our lives forever. There's only one in the secret place of the Most High. That's where we find refuge. That's where we find our peace and our rest. Help us, Lord, to realize the importance of that for us. That we'll not continuously look to the right or to the left trying to figure it all out, but that we will rest in you. Our eyes will be focused, as your word says, don't look to the right or the left, but keep your eyes right on. Jesus, just as we are the apple of your eye, so let you be the apple of our eyes. That the very focal point of everything that we look at and we look through is through you. And in that, Lord, I believe we will find victory in every circumstance that we face in our lives. So be blessed. Be honored, be adored, be exalted from this place, from our hearts, from our minds, from our souls, from our bodies. Be pleased, for yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen, church. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, worship team. You guys are awesome. Hallelujah. God is so good, isn't he? Hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, there, there, okay, there it is. All right. Wow. One day we are going to just take and get taken. Amen? Uh, I think I've said, this, I've said this before not that long ago, but it's like, you know, 
that ex-Satanist back in the 70s, Mike Warnke, who was a comedian, and he used to say that he used to have rapture practice in his front yard. So, he was ready. Amen. You guys, you guys, you guys heard of Mike Warnke? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great. He was great. He had some really amazing stories that he shared and stuff. So, okay, are we ready? Yeah. All right. Um, we're we're continuing it on in this series and in the study about the future. Um, the title of the, the whole series is basically, it's, it's the future war of the church. And in light of what we see going on around the globe, we are in a battle. Amen. Um, the sicknesses that are running rampant. Uh, the struggles with food and finances and health and strength and, and relationships that are blowing up. Uh, all over the place and stuff like that, you, you know, the natural mind would, would want you to take and think that, oh my gosh, it, it, it's fear, okay? The future brings a fear because of the unknown. But you see, we have been given instructions, we have been given a road map, we have been given the information that we need to live this life fearless. 2 Timothy 1.7 says that God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And so if, if, you, if we're still dealing with fear in our lives, then 1 John chapter 4 teaches us that if, 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 you, if you've got fear, then that means God's love is not perfected in you. So there's some things that we need to work on in our lives. If you fill yourself with information that is so negative all the time, then I can understand why fear would have a hold of your mind. But if we allowed ourselves to become so engulfed in what the Word of God teaches us, that there would be no room for that fear to be able to, engage, to engulf us because we're not giving place to the devil. The Bible says to submit to God. To resist the devil, and he'll fear, and he'll flee. Think about that. The title of the message today is Understanding the Future. Now, I'm not going to go into this long, drawn-out explanation of, of trying to figure out what the future is all about. Okay? It's right here. Okay? Open the book, begin to not just read it, but study it to find out what the future is all about. Okay, we're going to learn some things. Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 3, it says this. It says, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Jesus and they tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. How many of you have ever taken and asked, Lord, Lord show me what the future is about. Show me what this is going to happen. There's people all over the country, there's people all over the world that are trying to figure out what, what's happening and they're asking so many different questions. And there's nothing different between now and back then. And look at Jesus' reply. He says, look, and it's funny because here, a couple of days ago we had nice sunshine, nice comfortable weather. And then all of a sudden, yesterday, you know, I, when, when, I, when I put Sage to bed, I've got a, a blanket that I put over her front part so this way she stays nice and warm in the nighttime when it's cold. So I, the last couple nights I was, you know, pulling, the, pulling it back and I wouldn't drop it down all the way so that she could have some, some air to breathe and stuff like that. And, and so I pulled it back about halfway and everything was good. And then all of a sudden last night I said, well, girl, I said, I think we need to cover you back up again because it is cold. And so it was cold last night. It was cold this morning when I uncovered her. But she definitely appreciates it, appreciates it because uh, just like you and I, we don't like that cold weather that we deal with in our lives, Right? But look at this. Jesus replied, when the evening comes, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And then in the morning, today it will be stormy, for the sky is red and it's overcast. Yesterday when I woke up and I saw the clouds in the sky, I'm going, okay. 
And they were talking about rain. And as a matter of fact, Donnie was sharing with me Friday, I think it was, that it was supposed to rain yesterday. Oh, it's actually it was supposed to rain Friday, I think it was, first. And I said, no, it's not going to rain. And then I was talking to Richard, uh, and he said it was supposed to rain over the weekend. I said, no, it's not going to rain, because there was nothing in the clouds or in the skies to really tell me that. My little GP, my Google, my little uh, weather map said it was going to be nice and clear. It's going to be in the 70s and no, no clouds or nothing. That was one day. And then I turned around the next day and I looked at my thing and it said 35% chance rain. I'm like, what in the world? Okay, so it's amazing how it is that we can take in, we can look at the atmosphere of what's around us and we can discern or decipher what's going to be happening. Okay, but yet Jesus goes on to say, you know, he says in the morning it's, it's going to be stormy, the, the sky is red, overcast. And then he goes on and he finishes up to say, how is, that, how is it that you know how to interpret the appearances of the sky, but yet you cannot interpret the signs of the time. This was, what, this was what's going on in Israel today is nothing that's new. Okay? But this is something that was sought and planned probably from the time man, well, from the time that, that uh, uh, Cain and Abel uh, took and, and, and were at odds, but it was really between uh, Ishmael and Isaac. Okay? Because Ishmael represents the promise, the blessing in the Jewish nation. No, Isaac, excuse me, thank you. Ishmael represents the Arab countries. Okay? And they have been at odds with each other from that time since. And so there was, there was promises based upon ideologies in, in, in their culture that uh, Israel had no business existing on the earth. So there has, been a, there has been a vendetta against Israel from, from almost the beginning. And so Iran decided it was going to take and finally start doing something. And it did. Last night when they, when they sent off those couple hundred drones and missiles and, and stuff, and thank God for you know, the equipment that we were able to supply Israel with and, and their own stuff and some of the other nations that gathered around them to knock down, I think I was heard last night, it was like 99% of all those missiles and, and drones were, were knocked down. So, this is significant to, to what we're talking about as far as where the future is concerned. Because it's, it's just bringing us that much closer to that place that one day that, that Jesus is going to return. Okay? Listen. The future is a fuel that greatly propels human fear. Okay? If you don't know what the future is about, if you don't have the proper information, the future, what's going to... Listen, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Okay? If I let my brain begin to start trying to figure out some things and stuff like that, I mean, I can, I can, I can talk myself into getting hit by a car. Right? I can talk myself into, into, into getting shot by somebody. You know, if, if that's where I had my focus on. But like I said before, if you get into the Word and the Word will teach you what life is all about, okay, then you won't have to, you, you, your mind is not going to be thinking about those things. As a matter of fact, I share this with Tiff oftentimes. I said, you know, the Bible teaches us whatsoever things are good. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are praiseworthy, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what? Think on these things. In your life today, can you honestly say to yourself, not, not ask you to raise your hand, can you honestly say to yourself that these things are at the forefront of your thought process every day? Or... Are we, being, are we being filled with information that is driving us in a different direction? So future can be a fuel that propels human fear. You see, not knowing what will happen can produce paralyzing effects in those that are prone 
to such fear. On the other hand, and that's kind of cute because, you know, there's a movie out called The Fiddler on the Roof. You guys ever seen that? And uh, the, the, the father takes and he has this discussion with God. Okay, when he's trying to make a decision. You guys remember that one there? Yeah. He has this discussion with God, and, and so, because, you know, one daughter wants, you know, she wants to marry this guy. Well, no, because, you know, he's, he's not rich enough, or he doesn't have to be able to take care of her. And so he, so on one hand, he says, yeah, yo, know, God, no, because, you know, but then he says, but on the other hand. And so they go back and forth. So today, I want you to think about that. On the other hand, you can be filled with fear, but on the other hand, the future can also hold, like, it also links it's linked with expectations and anticipations or hopes of an occurrence like the birth of a child. It could be even like when you're at work and, and if you're working for somebody or even if you're a contractor where you bid, you get the contract, you do the work and you're expecting something good to come in return. Okay? Okay? When, 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 you, when, you, when you get married and, and all of a sudden you realize that, that you have the opportunity to share life with somebody, to share love with somebody, that you're not out there on your own, but you've got somebody there that's willing to walk with you through the thick and the, and the thin of life. As, as, you know, when you take your marriage vows and stuff like that, in, in, in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, or shut up there. You see, these expectations can cause us to have passion, joy, strength, and faith. And listen, in what in, in what God's going to do, not what we think the way it's going to happen, but in what God's going to do. You see, building faith and hope is one of the functions of the prophetic gift. Jeremiah was able to obey God in the midst of trouble. Why? Because he was given the picture of the future. Okay? I mean, for 70 years, the children of Israel were going to be enslaved under the, ba under the Babylonian Empire. But God spoke to Jeremiah, and he said, I will bring you back. I will restore you back to your home, and I will bless you, and, and you will prosper, and life is going to go on. So he so what is it, what, remember when we first started the series, what did he tell Jeremiah? He says, take and go and buy a piece of land. Okay, now the Babylonians, they're, they're starting to come in and they're starting to take over, but, but, but God says, go buy this piece of land. And he says, take the deed and, and, and put it and bury it, hide it someplace. Because when you come back, that's yours. Now in the natural, if somebody was to come up to me and say, hey, pastor, I want you to take and go buy you know, I want you to go buy this property in, in Alaska. It's like, for what? You know, they're too close to the Russians. No. But, but, but you, 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 you go buy this property, for what? I don't know. God, I, I mean, the, the world's coming to an end. Why would you have me spend money to go buy stuff? But God knows the future. He knows exactly what it is that he has planned for you and I. And he, want, and he has a blessing that's in store for you in your life, okay? You see, just as Jeremiah was willing to obey God, we, you and I, must be willing to obey, okay? And especially in these times of troubles that we live in. Even when he asks us to do something unusual, has he ever asked you to do something that you quite didn't understand? Yeah. Because God, knowing, God knows the plans and the purposes that are far beyond what you and I can understand or comprehend. Familiar scripture, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to what? Plans to what? Does that sound like it's going to hurt? <laughs> plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you what? And of the future. So if God has plans for you, why would you look 
to somebody else to try to figure out what this life is about. See, once again, our focus should be on him and on his word and on, on what he has promised because I can guarantee you every place that he takes you, there's going to be benefit, there's going to be joy, there's going to be strength, there's going to be life, there's going to be an abundance of happiness in your life. That doesn't mean that you're not going to go through some stuff. It's, it's, it's funny, and, and you know, maybe some of you can attest to this, but it's funny how it is that you know, when I first got sick 20 years ago, I can do just about anything that I did when I was healthy and strong. But the aftermath of what I went through, it, it just beat me up. And so bless you. So I, rem- you know, I remember when, when uh, I used to go to the doctor's offices and, and people are in there, they're moaning and they're crying and they're, oh, uh, you, know, they're, they're, you know, and I'm sitting there just like nothing's wrong with me. I go finally when I'm called in and I go into the doctor's office and the doctor starts going through all his tests and stuff like that, you know. He does all the stuff that they do and everything else and they can't say, oh, well, let's, well, let's do some blood work. So we do some blood work. Okay, well, let's do some x-rays. So we do some x-rays. Okay, let's do the endoscopy. Yeah, yeah, you guys have had that, right? Let's do the colonoscopy. You guys have that. Okay, so, so he goes through all these different things and they don't seem to be able to find it. And you know what, guys, honestly? Here it is 20 years later, the doctors still really don't know what's wrong with me. But I almost died about 15 years ago when I dropped down to 117 pounds. Okay? And yet in the midst of that, God says, would you go back and pastor? You talk about unusual asking? You you talk about seriously? You know? And yet... When I obeyed, I didn't understand. I didn't, I, I, I didn't want to take him and, and be, you know, I didn't want to be a pastor. I didn't, I didn't want to take and get up and have to preach. I didn't want to lead another praise and worship. I was in pain. I was hurting. I was struggling. And I, I, I didn't want, I didn't want, honestly, I didn't even want to go to church. Because it had over, the stuff overwhelmed me in life. But in a moment when God spoke, I was able to hear that. And he said, would you go back and pastor? And after he and I had a conversation, okay, God, are you serious? Okay. And I, even to the point where I said, God, if this sickness doesn't kill me, that the doctors don't even know what it is. I said, those people will. No offense, Marlon Kelly. Okay. (laughs) Marlon goes, what? I said, people kill me. Because people are mean. Y'all know that, right? People are mean. (laughs) And so, so, you know, so I, I took it, and when I said yes, that's when things begin to turn around. And be, things begin to start happening. Now, of course, you see, I'm not 117 pounds anymore. Now I'm not just barely getting around and stuff like that. I'm not just laying in bed all day long, just, just actually, you know, saying, God, take me home. But there was something inside of me that when I would, you know, oftentimes when I'm in the shower and, 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 and I'm holding onto the wall with everything that I've got, I'm saying, God, my life's in your hands. I don't understand this. But my life's in your hands and I'm trusting in you because apparently there's destiny still to be fulfilled. There's still purpose. There's still a plan that you have for me in my life. I don't know what it is, but God, if this is what you want, then I'll do it. And day after day after day, all of a sudden, things begin to start changing in my body. Now, is is everything wonderful and perfect? No, I still have issues. I still have to deal with stuff in my body and stuff like that, but I don't let those things dictate the life in which I choose to live, the direction in which I need to walk, okay, the path that God has placed for me. He said, this is is the path that I've set you on, walk in it. So I'm not going to go walking over here just because my body is saying something. I'm not going to go walking over here because somebody else is saying something. Whatsoever things are honest and just and wonderful. That's where I'm, that, that's, that's where I'm heading. Okay? That's where I'm going. Okay? Yeah, the voices are going to be here and they're going to try to distract me, but I'm not going to let them because this is where he's got me going. Okay? I'm not worried about whether the fact that we have, you know, 20 people, 30 people, 50, or 5,000 people. I don't, I don't care about that stuff. 
All I care about is, God, this is where you got me going. I'm going to walk. Okay? It's not up to me to try to make people come to church. But that's what we've been taught. Go out and get them and bring them in. And that, there, is, there, there is a place of evangelism. There is a place for soul winning. Okay? But my responsibility is not to go out and win the lost. My responsibility is to disciple the people that come. Okay? Now, when I'm out in the streets or if I'm out at a restaurant or if I'm out someplace else and God opens up a door, which he's done many times throughout my life, I will step into that place to speak to somebody about the, the Lord. Okay? But, but, but my, my, you know, the, the whole thing about the Great Commission is that, you know, it's about souls and stuff like that. Or, you know, well, you know, the Great Commission is go out and make disciples of all nations. Okay? The thing about souls is simply this. The Bible says that he who wins, who wins souls is wise. It didn't say that that was the ultimate thing. Okay? Now, if you're an evangelist, don't take this wrong. Okay? Go win souls. Okay? But more than going to win souls so that you can put a notch on your belt, okay? Fall in love with Jesus. Okay? Draw closer to him. Draw nigh unto him because he's drawing nigh unto you. He says, be ye holy because I'm holy. So, so, you know, so, you know let's, let's figure out what it is, what our life is all about and everything else. First and foremost, it's to love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's, 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 that's the initial, that's the very first commandment that's given. Okay? You can't love that person out there on the streets if you can't love him first. You can't love that person on the streets if you can't love yourself first. And if there's an internal battle that's going on within you, then you wonder why it is that things just aren't quite working the way that you've been taught throughout the years of being in church. Okay? God knows the plans that he has for you. Plans to prosper you, not to hurt you. If you ever feel, if anybody ever says that God did this to you, I remember when my, my brother, Frankie, um, he took in, and when he had his, his, uh, his wife gave birth to a little boy. His name was Tony. And about 18 years old, uh, Frankie was, was feeding Tony, I guess, some spaghetti. And um, little Tony was, you know, he, he was just active and everything else. And so like, like kids do, you know, you start eating and then they start just kind of floundering a little bit. Well, he was kind of floundering, throwing his head back and going, you know, and, it, and he did this for, for just, you know, maybe five, ten minutes. And then all of a sudden he went back and he stopped breathing. So Frankie brought him back up, and, and he's you know, going through the process of you know, slapping him in the back, turning him upside down, trying to get that, whatever it was that was causing him not to breathe. All of a sudden, in my brother's hands, his little boy that he cherished, he loved with everything that was, I mean, that was his son. That was his heir. Okay? That was his legacy. Now, he, had, he has daughters, but you know, ladies first, men, to have a, to have a son that carries our name into the future. That's, that's important. Now, if you don't have sons, that's okay. All right? But I'm saying, you know, for, 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 for many, that it's, it, it was important to him and stuff like that. And so, all of a sudden, here's this son that he loved so dearly, and now he's dying. He turned blue in my brother's arms. They jumped into the car, and they, ran, they, they went to the hospital, and my brother's just frantic. And they got to the hospital, and Tony died. ripped my brother's heart out of his chest. He was so broken at his wife. And, you know, and the thing that's funny is that, you know, because of my dad, we, we, we came to the Lord. But then some of my siblings, they kind of walked back because of hurt, hurt in the church, hurt in society, whatever it is, and stuff like that. So my brother was, was he was hurt, he was angry and stuff like that, so they didn't, but then... But just before that happened, and it's amazing how the devil does what he does. Just before that happened, my brother and, and his wife gave their lives back to Christ and started going to church again. Okay? And the challenge or the test that the devil threw at them is he took what was most important to him in his life. But then there are those 
in the family, there are those in the friendship role that are of other religions that begin to start saying to them, well, you know, God needed Tony. So he took him. You know, remember John 10.10. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came to give life. The devil is the one that subtracts and, and, and divides. God is the one that adds and multiplies into your life. Okay? So they kept telling him that, that, that God took him and he took Tony because he needed him. God don't need Tony like that. Okay? But there is evil in the world and there are circumstances, unfortunately, that happen in life that people go through some of the things that they went through. I mean, a couple weeks ago when we had the, the, the uh, cardboard testimony, I was this, but now I'm this. Each and every one of us had something wonderful that you, that you shared of your life that you exposed. And maybe vulnerably, you did that, but you did it in faith. But it was a blessing to many of us in our lives. Okay? So guess what happened? Just my brother and, 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 and his wife, uh, they walked away from God. And so Frankie is, is still to this day, he's, he's, he's tender, but he's still, you know, he, he, he's angry at God because he was told that God took his son. Okay, and so once again, what are you giving your attention to? Who are you listening to in your, in, in, in your life? Who's influencing your decisions that you make each and every day as you live your life? God wants to play, prosper. He wants, he wants to give you hope. He wants to give you a future. At many points throughout this teaching, I hope that you will most likely encounter prophetic pictures of the future church. So when you listen, don't just let the words go by, but pay attention to what's being shared with you because this is going to show you something for your future that's going to give you a hope that fear is not going to be able to take away anymore. Amen? Let me give you an example. In the coming days will be like those of Moses, in which God, the demonstrations of God, God excuse me, the demonstrations of God's power will overthrow today's pharaohs. In order, though, to bring about the redemption of entire territory, Okay, I want you to say, I'm going to read that again. The coming days will be uh, likened to those of Moses in which God dem God demonstration, God's demonstration of, excuse me, the demonstration of God's power will overthrow today's Pharaoh. How many know that we have Pharaohs that are living today in this world? But for the purpose to bring redemption to entire territory. Not just, it's, what, this, this thing that's going on with Israel, let me tell you what, Israel is coming into the kingdom in, in, in their fullness. Okay? They've rejected Christ as the Messiah for so long. But one day, every knee will bow. One day, every tongue will confess that Jesus, not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Hare Krishna, not the devil himself, Jesus is Lord. I love when, when, when you see Kenneth Copeland's programs and stuff. He's got his Victory Channel. And, and after every segment, whether it's uh, a teaching or even, even the little commercial thing that they do, all of a sudden you hear Kenneth Copeland. And Jesus is Lord. And that's a reality that, that's in him. But is that a reality in you and me today? Something to think about. Here's another scripture that holds key principles uh, for the days ahead. No, in, uh, days ahead. Numbers 33, verses 3 through 4. Out of the NIV, it's up on the screen. Numbers chapter 33, verses 3 through 4, it says this. It says, the Israelites set out, and I want you to watch this. Okay, this is after, or this is after the death of the Egyptians, the firstborn. Now Israel is walking out of Egypt. They're walking away from their oppression and their oppressors. 
They're walking away from their poverty. They're walking away from the struggles of what they have lived through for the, for the past 400 years of their life. And look at what it says. It says, the Israelites set out from Ramses, Ramses was a pharaoh, on the 15th day of the first month, the day after Passover. They marched out boldly in full view of all of the Egyptians who were burying all of their firstborn. whom the Lord had struck down among them, for the Lord had brought judgment on their gods. You see, the, the, the Jewish people, they didn't have to take and worry about, as they were leaving, God said, go. They went, and they went in, in full faith and in full confidence. I, I, don't, I don't think that they were going around going, well, you know, are they going to throw a spear at me or... Or is there going to be a sword coming over? They walked confidently through the midst of all the rubble that was going on around them. That which oppressed, that which held them down, all of a sudden they're walking right through it. They marched boldly in full view of all of the Egyptians because they were burying their own firstborn. Because God brought judgment. Okay? This thing that's going on in Israel today, judgment is imminent. Okay? I always pray. I said, God, before justice is served and judgment comes, somehow let mercy speak into the lives of those that are doing the evil. And, and it, because the Bible says that God wishes that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It is not God's will for any of them, even, no matter how bad you've been. God wants for everybody, doesn't mean that everybody's going to go or come. So I pray, God, let your mercy draw them into a place of salvation before something goes wrong. Now that's just what I pray. You see, the Egyptians could not stop the Israelites from leaving because they were too busy bearing their own. Their focus was not on the Jewish people leaving, the Hebrews. Their focus was on, my God, <laughs> just like my brother Frankie, my boy, my baby. <sighs> their gods, their gods had been rendered powerless because of the almighty God. The Hebrew name El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, judged them. We're going to close. And my hope for each and every one of us that in these times in which we get together to learn, in these teachings, in this series that we're talking about, and other prophetic words, is that the, under, is the understanding that God will bring our lives into our lives, new expectations of the coming victories that he has prepared for the church today. Do you believe that? So as we close, I want you to, it's kind of funny, it's almost like a dichotomy. As we close, open your hearts. Open your hearts and your minds to him. And close out the devil who tries to trip you up because you don't want to miss this adventure. So buckle up. and Hang on, hold on tight. Because if you put your faith and trust in him, he's going to take you places that you never thought possible in your life. That almost sounds like a Joel Osteen kind of thing, isn't it? <laughs> I just, it just dawned on me. I just like, it sounds like Joel Osteen there. He'll take you places that, that, that you never thought possible. Amen? Amen? We'll continue this conversation next time. Okay. I was wondering if I was sharing before, I think, uh, with, with Professor Diane that, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been shortening my messages. Um, not because I'm, not because you know me, I'm, I'm a talker. 
I can keep on going for a while and stuff like that. But it seems like I shortened my messages and then I ended up talking more than what I did if I just continued on the message and stuff like that. But this time, it worked out well. It's, it's, it's plenty early and stuff. Um, but I want to pray. I want to pray for you uh, that from this day forward, that if there are things that have, that have caused you in your life to be concerned about your future. Okay, listen. Um, Ken would understand this because I've spent some time with him. You know, I understand this. And it, Diane, you understand this. Many of us, that you've gone through things in your life, uh, health-wise, and you would wonder, maybe at times, is this the end? But you say that not, not in, a, in a confident way of saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to go be with Jesus. But maybe you've asked yourself a question, is this the end? Is this all that there is? I mean, I've done that myself where I've said, you know, did I, you know, have I finished everything? Have I completed everything? Have I come up short? You know, generation after generation after generation Things that we have, things that have been uh, left undone by our forefathers, our past, from generation to generation. Do you notice in families when uh, you live your life, you have certain principles, you have certain morals that you live by. And then when you have children, how sidetracked that we can become through life that oftentimes we neglect to pour into them everything that was poured into us when we were growing up. And then that generation, they lessen the information or the understanding of their lineage until all of a sudden one day you come and now we have like we have a generation today. They don't want God. We have, we have a, generation, a generation today that are so confused about their own identity. I mean, could you, could you imagine? I'm, I'm from the baby boomer generation. But then you have the, 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 the X generation, the Y generation, the Z generation. What other generations are there? The millennial? The millennial? They're after us, right? Us, us baby boomers? They're after us? <laughs> So, so you, have the, you have the millennials, you have the Zs and the Gs and the, and the, and the, and the crazies and all that kind of stuff. And, and now you look at, look at society today. Look at what's going on. We, we have stuff that's being taught to our little ones that have no business being taught. And yet when parents are going in to try to, hey, wait a minute, we disagree with that. They're the ones that are being arrested or, or shut down, Okay. There, there were was, there was some pastors that went to some school board meetings and stuff, and, and he, they were just, you know, sharing their displeasure about some of these stuff, stuff the books that, are, that they're putting in libraries and stuff like that. And that, they, they take the book, and they're reading it to the council. What the book is saying, and the council is saying, no, 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 you can't, you can't say that kind of stuff here. Well, why is it okay to say it to our kids or to, to, to make it, you know, available to our kids when you guys don't even want to hear it? You wonder why. You wonder why that in the athletic world that there are the, the genders that are changing their sides. And, and look at the chaos that it's causing. Yeah. Look at the damage that it's doing. Okay? In, 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 in the transgender world where people are being mutilated for the cause of an identity that is Nothing. And yet, somehow or another, it seems to be adapting into a society because the pushback is not the way it should be. Why am I saying all this? It's because we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. So put your hand, as the old songwriter used to do back in the 70s, put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the waters. Put your hand in the hand of the one who calms the sea. Take a look at yourself and... Come on, Marlon, say it. Look at others differently. There you go. I knew Marlon knew that. 
He just dated himself, okay? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but put your hand in him, and I can guarantee you he'll walk you through stuff, you know? Psalms 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to be afraid, okay? Because God has, every day when I pray of myself, I say, God, I thank you that I have the mind of Christ. And my mind is sound. At almost 71 years old, my mind is sound. You may not think it sometimes, but my mind is sound. Why? It's because the scripture that I used in the beginning, because God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So therefore, the decisions that I make, therefore, the thoughts that I think, therefore, the actions that I take, or even the reactions, are, all, are not based upon a fear that the world wants me to respond by. Okay, because I have the mind of Christ, therefore, just as he didn't think himself to be somebody important, came and became nothing. But then God elevated him to that place, highly exalted, above all the nations of the world, above all the heavens and all the earth. That's a, that's a promise to you and I. I'm not saying that we're going to be God. I'm not going to be saying that we're Jesus but we are his reflection. We are the very essence of who he is on the earth, reflecting to one another. So when I see you, I shouldn't be seeing, you know, the struggle. I shouldn't be seeing the garbage. That, that I shouldn't be seeing what you used to be and what you used to do. I should look through what Jesus, how Jesus looks at you through his eyes and to see a vessel of love see a vessel of, of righteousness, see a vessel that, 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 that there's hope in them that they're going to be able to accomplish everything that, that God has placed within them. And it's not an overnight success. We've had years of experience in being crooked and ugly. Now God can turn that around just like that, and I've seen him do it with some people. But there are those and there are many that it's a process. And it's a lifelong process. So don't beat yourself up over the head just because you haven't arrived. Don't beat yourself up over, the head, over your head because you, were, you, you thought you were all in a bag of chips, but now your, your chips are crumbled. Okay, don't, don't, don't think yourself to be somebody that's all messed up and jacked up because you, know, you, you, just, you seem to fumble all the time. No, don't do that. Look to him, the author, the finisher of your faith. I guarantee you, you won't go wrong. So, Father, I thank you for my family. Those that are here in this room and those that are watching my live stream. Father, I ask right now for your grace and your wisdom to be upon each and every one of them. I pray, Lord, that the mindsets that we have learned and we have adapted into our lives, if they don't line up with your word, God, that we will take and do something by putting them out so that your word can become full force in us. That in everything that we do and all that we say, Father God, that we will fulfill your call on our lives. Sure, we'll make mistakes, but we're not going to stay in those mistakes because we're going to know how to come out of that because your word teaches us the very principles of how to live this life each and every day. Father, I ask that you bless my family here in a special way. Bless them with strength. Bless them with favor. Father God, bless them with your prosperity. Bless them, Father God, with a future, a knowing future that everything that you have planned for us is for our good. Father, meet every need. Join families together, Father God, that have been separated or that have been at art with each other. But more than all of these things and others, Father God, the most thing that my prayer, my, my cry is that God, let them get to know you more. Let them, Father God, let, get, let them not only just to experience you, but to obey you. so that you can do everything in them that you have so desired from the beginning. You wish to lavish your love 
and your goodness and all your blessings upon each and every one. We, we ask you, Lord, to bless us, but God, Ephesians says that we're already blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. So the key here to start off with is love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our minds, all our strength. That whatever we put our minds to, Father God, it's because of you. And through that, Father God, you're going to meet every need in our lives. So watch over my family. Watch over, Father, my friends. Father, watch over each and every day of our lives and walk us through this, this journey that you've set for us. That we might glorify you in everything that you say and do. And Lord, that when that time comes that you do take us from this earth, and we'll say that we finished our course, we finished the race, and we have accomplished. Therefore, we have the opportunity not only to receive that crown, but we have the opportunity to lay it at your feet in a continuous attitude of worship. Because once again, acknowledging you are God. It's for your kingdom, it's for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those watching my live stream, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for uh, just allowing us to, to minister into your life. If you don't know this Jesus that we're talking about, it's simple. He loves you. John 3.16 says, I for God so loved you that he gave Jesus, his son. And all you'd have to do is but to believe. You confess him with your mouth, but you, you believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead. You begin to start confessing that he becomes not only your savior, but, but your Lord. You do that by confessing your sin. You don't, I'm not talking about going through a list of stuff to say, Father, I, I messed up. Forgive me for all that I have done. And make me new. And let me start brand new for you. And help me to learn how to live this life. That's, that's, that's all you really have to do. Don't worry about stuff that you've done in your past. Don't worry. Listen, 1 John 1, 9 says that he is faithful to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What does that mean? And not only the sins that you may confess, but even those that maybe you've done that you don't even recognize. He's got you covered. He's got you, he's got you taking care of every aspect of your life, all sides of you, up and down, everything else. He's got it covered for you. All you got to do is just trust him now. So if you've, if you've asked Jesus into your life, then praise God, guess what? You're part of his family now. Okay, now there's some things that you need to do. Number one is you need to take and get a Bible. As I say every time, if you don't have a Bible, if you don't know where to get one, write us at 540 East H Street, Colton, California, 92324. We will send you a Bible for free. And I'm not talking about a little booklet thing. I'm talking about a, a nice Bible, okay? Because we want you to start learning and understanding this new life that you've, you've transitioned to. Okay, next you need to find a church. You need to find a place where you can take and learn and grow in this life. And you need people in your life. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. We need each other, church, okay? We're not an island to ourselves. We need each other. We need the encouragement. We need the faith that builds when we draw from each other in the testimonies that we give or in the life in which we share. Okay? The strength of just being there. So, you know, we're doing things in this church that if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do. I went downstairs with my nephew yesterday. He, my nephew who took my brother's, my brother who took his life, uh, had a fire extinguisher company and he was servicing our fire extinguishers. And he, he provided us with many of what we have. And so his, his, his son took over the business. Now, he went through some, some issues and stuff like that. Now, my son, my, my, my nephew came, comes out of the gang life. He comes out of the drug life. He comes out of the prison life, okay? And these circumstances that, that he has faced in his life in his past couple years after my brother, my brother passed, he could very easily have gone back in anger, because of what transpired in his life. But he chose to take the better road. And because of it, 
he took and he ended up getting his, his, his own license. He restarted the business that his stepmother was trying to steal from him. He restarted with a, with a new name, got his own license, he's got his own equipment, he's got everything that he needs. God has given him favor. And he came yesterday and he serviced our fire extinguishers. So we're up to code and stuff. And so, but it was interesting because afterwards, and, and of course, he, and he did, I said, I said, I said, Mijo, I said, what do I owe you? He goes, nothing. I said, what do you mean nothing? I said, I, you know, and I told him like I told my brother when he came and he, he gave us these things. I said, I said, bro, I said, you're, you're my brother. And I told my nephew, I said, I said, Mijo, I said, you're my nephew. I said, you're a businessman. Okay. I'm a businessman. I said, I don't want you to think that I, you know, I'm bringing you out here because I want you to you know, do something for free, okay? Business is business. Now, if we come to an agreement in a contract and you decide to alter the contract and do something different, that's on you. But it's not gonna be because I manipulated you to try to get something from you. That goes on too much in the world. And that goes on too much in the church, okay? And I don't wanna be one of those pastors that manipulates that's why, you know, I, I'd say, I say here's, here's the offering uh, baskets or boxes. Come and bring your gifts and stuff like that, but I'm not going to sit here and give you a 20-minute dissertation on why you need to give. I think everybody in this place hears God enough, and you know what you, know what you need to do, okay? And I thank you because, like I said, the stuff that we do, I went downstairs and, and I, I sent my nephew and his wife home with boxes, of food, okay? But I didn't realize how full our refrigerators and freezers are. You know, Kelly, you know, Kelly comes and, and she organizes downstairs and she's w- working with, with, uh, with Donnie and with Richard and with Josie and stuff on you know, every single Thursday. And she gets in there and, and she starts, they start putting stuff in crates and they get them all in the refrigerator. You, you open the door, you think that those crates are going to fall out on you because there's so much stuff that's in there. The freezers, all of our freezers are full of meat, okay? So if you need, oh, if you need food, come on by. If you need food, please sign the, 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 the clipboard and, and get some food. I, Richard, ain't, he ain't shy about giving you stuff, okay, and which I'm glad. Next week is our food outreach, right? So this coming Thursday, we're going to be giving, we're going to be, you know, gathering and getting it all ready. And then Saturday, we're going to be doing our food outreach. So, and our purpose is to give everything that we have on that Saturday. The reason why we do that is because God gives back, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. And that's what he's been doing with us and stuff like that. So, so I'm just grateful. So thank you. Listen. Before we go, we love you. We appreciate you. Church family, Pastor Dana's not here today. She woke up this morning just battling again. So, uh, so baby girl, I love you. All right, so we will, I will see you in a little bit here. Of course, she's going to be calling me up and telling me to get Teddy and stuff like that. So, but we will see you soon. But declare with us before we go that we are. Radiant. We are. Radiant. We are. Radiant. And he is God. That's just the way it is. We'll see you the next time in Jesus' name.